Hellcat presents An Hour in Hell, Episode 9 with Nerdy Renee. Did you write this? Yeah. I love Everyone it. asked me that. I like it. I wrote it like, yeah, I, I uh, you know, I made it in like five minutes. But yeah. It was, it's fun. No, I like it. I think it's fun. It's. What's weird is like, not to plug myself here, but my new album is so different. It's like yeah. this. It's like. More, more like. Techy, more yeah. like fake drums and. Dude, I honestly am getting into the fake drum wave. Yeah. We're, we're going to fuck around with that on our new album. Like fuck around with some 808s. And yeah, shit like that. yeah. I mean, you could go that route, or you can go like fake drums that are real drums. You know what I mean? Like sampled, like sampled, because then you can you can alter it. A, a lot easier. of pop stuff has you know quote unquote fake drums, but they're like they sound so real you don't know. You, you'd be yeah. surprised. Like if someone was like, yeah, those are a real drummer did not play that yeah. on one kit. You'd be like, oh, it did, did yeah. fooled me, you know? Yeah. Um. Okay, welcome to episode nine of the Hellkite Podcast, where I, Jackson Rao, explore new music and get to know fellow artists. With me today is, introduce yourself. Hey everybody, I'm Matty Gregg, <laughs> and I play guitar and I sing in the band, The Swells. You did me one better. I was going to say, he plays, I was going to do that. Oh, let's you. do that. Here, forget what I just said. Okay. Do I do the opening line again? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to episode nine of the Hellkite Podcast, where I, Jackson Rao, explore new music and get to know fellow artists. With me today is... Matty Gregg. Matty Gregg plays guitar and he sings in The Swells. Is that correct? That is correct. I didn't want to get it wrong. That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> I get it. Um, it's exciting to have you here, man. Um, yeah, you can put here. that on the, the table. Yeah, I, I don't want any spill accidents going on. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. Episode nine, man, just flies by. I I, ha- I I talked to you briefly over you know DM when I first had, um, I think it was like or after episode one I asked you like hey would you like to be on in the future Oh yeah um, I was hyped and you know I made a list of of people that I knew I wanted to have on you were on that list Oh man there were maybe like ten people on there Oh really Yeah Wow that's a, that's actually an honor Well you know I, I was just trying to think of like people who. I'm interested in talking to because if I don't, if I have someone on that's a boring as fuck, <laughs> like let's be honest, I'm not gonna be in my shit. You know, I'm gonna sound like I'm bored because I am bored. Right. But if I, <laughs> see, so I don't like to fake it. You know, if yeah. I'm genuinely interested in something that you have to offer me, then it's gonna just play out better for everyone. Right. I'm like, who wants to listen to a boring fucking person? Like, even, <laughs> I don't know, even like the biggest stars. I'm trying to think of a good example. Oh, you know what? I saw this interview once with Nardwar and Sonic Youth, oh. uh, where he does one of his his like famous like drop in interviews. Yeah, and he was just not prepared. No, he was great. He, Nardwar is prepared. Oh no, no, Nardwar, of course he was prepared. But Sonic Youth, those guys were honestly so mean to Nardwar. Yeah, and. He was he obviously was still bringing that level of energy that he brings but it turned me off to Sonic Youth. Wow, really? Yeah, like I straight up have never listened to Sonic Youth but I watched their interview before ever listening to their music <laughs> and to That's this day bad. I've never Ooh. listened and I say fuck Sonic Youth. Ouch. Yeah, be, and I don't know, maybe Sonic Youth you fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, they fuck if you're listening. <laughs> Sonic It's Youth. a little too late to dismantle their, you know, sort of power because they've kind of already made their impact. But... I think that I could ruin their career. Oh, really? I think that that's what I'm here to do today. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Fuck yeah. Sonic Youth. Yeah, fuck you Sonic Youth. <laughs> I listened to like one song by them. Yeah. But it's it's weird when there's a band that's like toted as, you know, XYZ like they're Oh, they're the start of this genre. They're like they're decade defining, and you're guilty of not listening to them. Yeah, and and you're af- <laughs> you're like afraid to tell people because they're gonna do that thing where they're like, "You <gasps> never." Oh my god! <laughs> What's a good? You've never listened to the Beatles? Oh yeah, that's a good one. I've like okay, everyone's listened to the Beatles. You fucking asshole. <laughs> Like, they have so many hit songs, it's impossible not to listen to them. Right. Have I scoured their discography? Have I watched every documentary on John Lennon? Have I, you know, conspirized about his death? No. 
No. I don't give a shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's enough for me to just say, like, yeah, the Beatles were big, maybe the biggest. Let's move on. Yeah. There's, you know? There's other fish in the sea. You know what Plenty. I mean? Plenty. The Who's there's a great There's other band. fish in the octopus's garden. <laughs> Love that one. Um, so let's get on to the albums. I mean, I'll, I'll pick your brain about other shit later. Yeah, sounds good. We have... Oh, I'm so excited about what I listen to because sometimes it's a mixed bag because yeah. I, I'm really just putting my faith in whoever I'm having on. Mm-hmm. Um, they could really... They could really fuck me. You know, you could give me... <laughs> you could give me something that's not only bad, but is has like almost a negative listening quality like it makes yeah. me feel bad about myself after listening to it i've yet to have something that terrible yeah that's uh, but yeah <laughs> I, I, feel you, I feel you though sometimes when i listen to things i just feel like damn i think this is like making me a worse musician yeah for having listened to like it. it's dumbing me down like yeah. i'm losing progress <laughs> on what i've gained uh so i'll start with the album you recommended me which is um isolation by kale uchis Kali Uchis, yeah. Kali Uchis. Yeah. I've never heard of her before. Oh. Um, so I kind of have that, uh, I don't know if you'd call it an advantage, but I'm just jumping in mm-hmm. on, on her yeah. um, thing. That's fun. So I'll, I'll just say briefly what I thought about Isolation. I fucking loved it. Yes. <laughs> nice. Start with that. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I listen to these usually when I'm like working out. So if there's if it's something that's super like soft, it's it's almost weird because I'm like doing something energetic but mm-hmm. listening to something soft. Yeah. But this music really pumped me up. Right. Um, so that's a quality on its own. And then not to mention it's just just some super catchy and melodically sparse shit in here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say it's super well defined. I'd call it pop, probably. I think that's fair. Somewhere in that sphere. Yeah, it's it's definitely has a lot of mainstream appeal. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, she's the songwriting is impeccable. I'll say so that. So she does that all, right? Um, I'm not entirely sure. She de- there's no way that she does is not involved because yeah, it's not like every song is super different. You can tell with a lot of pop artists if they just do a lot of genre flipping and. It just seems that they're singing like the same kind of melodic lines. Yeah, it's just like, all right, you're just a singer. Like, well, the f- the album had many different turning points. Right. Where it's like, what uh, what kind of album is this? Is yeah. It, is it full blown pop? Is it more like yeah. electronic, um, like beach house kind of stuff, or is it more like like funky or something? You know, there was like different yeah. aspects. She straight up featured Bootsy Collins on this album. And oh Bo- yeah. Who actually just played in L.A. last night. Oh, wow. No shit. Yeah, he had a free show. I wasn't able to make it. But yeah, he's like... I don't know. He's not like... He's up there. He's like one of the, like the big like quintessential funk bass players. Mm. If you have... This is another album that you should listen to. It's not new by any means. I, I think it came out in the 70s, late 70s. But it's okay. called... It's Bootsy Collins stretching out on Bootsy's Big Rubber Band, and that's like a fantastic <laughs> funk album. And he's the one he's singing. Song. He's like, "You gotta be careful, baby." You remember that one on uh, uh, After the Storm? No. He sings. He's playing bass on that song, and he sings in the intro too. He's phenomenal. But like the fact that she featured this bass player on this album, it's like, one of those things. that's like, all right, oh, okay, that's a little, that's yeah. a little jab. She you know? knows what's up. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, some standout tracks for me was "Just a Stranger" with Steve Lacey. I think yeah. he sings the chorus. Yeah, and then "In My Dreams." That's a good one too. I yeah. just love the. I really love the rhythms of all these. Like, uh, and <laughs> and just the chorus of "Just a Stranger." It's like, um, don't want my hundred dollar bills. She don't mm-hmm. want love. She want my hunt. I was just like, this is fucking like. I don't dance. I don't know how to dance. Yeah. <laughs> but I was Same. like fucking like moving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just felt great. Um. God, that song is really good. That song. I mean, that whole album just literally is just sprinkled with like. There's like fairy dust in like every single song. Also, like Flight Twenty Two. Oh is that what it's yeah. Called? I would say that's probably my. Favorite. I almost wrote that one, but I, I don't know. I just decided just to do yeah. two. It's all good. What about you? Were were there some standout tracks? Are they similar to mine? Um, yeah. I mean, I really love every single song on that album. Even like she has some pop, some poppier stuff on that. I would say like, like Tyrant and Killer. Like, and those seem to be 
more on the side of like wave like it's pop wavering on like club jams yeah but see, i, I can't think get, that i can't quite get behind that for some reason yeah no and i feel that but mm. i like the fact that she made me like those songs like she made those songs palatable for me was because i thought there were so many songs in that album that um were just so stellar yeah I, i'm really excited uh I, i'm gonna go see her pretty soon yeah, because she there's like she's just such a great talent. Um, I totally agree. Uh, oh, but I, as far as my favorite songs, I forgot. It's uh, I after the storm is definitely up there, uh, just for the fact that it has Tyler and Bootsy Collins and Cali Uchis. That was song. actually a, yeah, that was sick. That's like an insane song. I like Killer. Uh, yeah, those are really good. I think those are two really solid songs. Oh, and Flight Twenty Two for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think for my review, I'd say, um, in terms of buy it, try it, pass, I would say it's an easy buy it for me. Buy this album. Yeah, I would I buy, highly yeah. recommend it. Um, I mean, like pop is one of those genres that it's so refined at this point, you mm-hmm. know, it changes like from era to era, decade to decade, but right. like the formula stays the same. So you can't really go wrong with it, you right. know? Um, if you're looking for something like crazy, you know, adventurous, it's it's not usually that, but it's it's just good music, mm-hmm. catchy songs. Yeah, it's just good. Like I'm fun, you yeah. know. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not even concerned with this. With this album, it's hard to kind of define as far as the genre goes. Yeah, but it like when the music is good enough that I'm not even concerned with like with what it is, you know, what yeah. the genre is. Cause there's like a little bit of everything in that, right? There's like, there's funk, there's, you know, there's pop, mm-hmm. there's like little tidbits of jazz. There's That's how you know it did a good job. right? Yeah. And at the very end, I'm not a killer may, may have been the, the final track, but there's, there's literally like a sh- string section that plays the, the whole album out. Yeah. And then it just ends on like a cadence of one chord and it just fades out. And they, 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 they fade the song out. And then I was like, oh, what's the next song? And yeah, the album was done. And I was like left wanting more. <laughs> yeah. So what would you get it for your review? Well, that's a hard buy. Hard yeah, buy. That's a hard buy. I would buy that. I would buy that. That's an album for me that like I would buy a physical copy of. And I would buy like a vinyl pressing. of it. I think I, I would also buy a vinyl pressing. Um, I don't have a lot of music like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And what I love about doing the podcast and like discovering new music is that I'm my my tastes are changing I can feel it you know day to day it's like I'm wanting different things yeah I'm not like stuck in my little 90s bubble which I feel like I have been for so fucking long (laughs) right I can I could stay there forever I really could and I'd enjoy myself but (laughs) I'd be missing out on so much thing so many things that are coming out today um and that came out before uh so I just for this for this album just made me excited, you know. Yeah, it made me really excited. I can't wait to see what she does in the future. I think I'm not sure this may have been her like freshman effort as far as an album goes. She had like and I, I could be wrong here, but this is like her first like big release album cuz she's recently just gained like a good amount of popularity. Yeah, well, I I had no idea who she was. I mean, yeah. that's not saying much cuz I'm kind of like, you know, uh, a recluse in terms of who's like hot. Yeah. Know? Um, but I'm glad you recommend me to her. Uh, I have yeah, fun man. with that. So the next artist we have is, um, a little more obscure, actually relative to, uh, Kala Uchis, a lot more obscure. Mm-hmm. They're called the Essex Green. Right. The album is called Hardly Electronic. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll just say briefly what I thought. Definitely, definitely different, you know, oh, yeah. approach this with a different mindset. Uh, kind of more of a folky classic rock sort of sound mm-hmm. but it's it's modern you know the recording quality is modern and it sounds new it sounds fresh mm-hmm. um a, a couple standout tracks for me was the first song on the album i don't know what it is about first songs on albums but i generally love them mm-hmm. weird what was the what was the title on that one it's it, called sloan ranger sloan ranger that's right that's it just right. has a great chorus yeah i like that one um and it it just has a really cool vibe, and the vibes kind of go a lot. Like, uh, there's a lot of different things that happen in this album. 
The oh, other yeah. favorite song I have is In the Key of Me, which is like a yeah. super stripped down. It's like there's a horn section, there's um, strings and piano. Right. And there's not a lot of guitar, and then there's like yeah. a female vocal. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like her delivery, and I like I like the horn section, but they didn't feel the need that it was... Um, it didn't have to be like grandiose. It was yeah. it, like there. It was pretty dynamic. It was minimal. Yeah. Like somehow they had uh, what felt like probably a full orchestra, but that song was like so laid back, mm-hmm. and it that's kind of a hard thing to do because you just have so many sounds. Yeah, I like the lyrics in that one as well. Yeah, and and one thing I want to touch on with this album is like. You 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 come from an album we just came from where it's, it's it's like it's super simplistic. You have you know simple structures, but it's just done so damn well, yeah. right? And then you have an album like this where it's it's more eclectic. Mm-hmm. Definitely, it's harder to approach, you know, from the from the outset, and it's more complex in the structure. Yeah. Um, in the key of me, which is I probably my favorite song oh, yeah. on the album, is very complex in its chord structure it's jumping from key to key and it's it's really really cool though yeah it's a hard thing to pull off yeah it was i thought it was i thought it was pretty good i just with the whole album and even from like you look at the cover and the 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 album title Mm -hmm. and like the way that they're trying to portray themselves it seems like you have those guys like i'm sure you've dealt with them like the more and more that you work with musicians or or other producers and engineers and we were just talking about jack white like you have these these people that like are almost luddites like they don't want to they don't want to they want to do everything as analog as possible (laughs) and like the the, for those of you that don't know that the album was called hardly like hardly electronic yeah and they, it just seemed to me like they were trying really hard to be uh, like that kind of like 70s studio musician like type, of, have, bring that type of artistry to it or level of uh, technical skill. Yeah. And they were, it just seemed like they were really trying very hard to portray themselves as like, you know, we're bringing it back to the old days. We're only using, you know, we're only using analog equipment or what have you. You know everyone's a lot of mainstream artists in the past decade have done that. Like I'm thinking of Foo Fighters did their album Wasting Lights. Like, Oh, this is all recorded on tape yeah. and it's in a garage. It's like this whole sort of idea of back to roots. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, it can be cool. Uh, but for the most part, you, and, and from like a mixing point of view and a production point of view, it's like, we want something that's new. Yeah. People, Audience members definitely want something that's right. new. They could give a fuck if it's recorded to tape. Yeah. They can't even tell. No, yeah. And most of these people are not like, I listen to this album on Spotify off of my phone. Yeah. Through earbuds. Mm-hmm. And like, the thing about record, like, I, you know, if that's your thing and that's how you want to do it and that's how you want to express yourself, go nuts. Like, the, if that's what you need to do, then totally do it. Whatever's yeah. going to get us your truest version of yourself, I'm all for it. And I think that there is a lot of beauty to recording to tape. Like you have albums like like Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys that you, you know, you have on vinyl and you plug those in through like actual speakers mm-hmm. and you listen to that and you can hear you can hear a lot of that in a different way. Whereas if I was just plugging in Bluetooth in my car. Yeah. And that's that to, as far as that goes, then that's sick. I do I do appreciate that. But sometimes I feel like in this day and age, like, I don't know how worth it it is to, to go through the trouble. Yeah. If it doesn't, you know, if, if at the end, like, I know our fans are going to be listening on Spotify mm-hmm. or Apple music or whatever, whatever they want to do. Very rarely are people listening to our stuff, even on CD. So I don't know. I just think that that that's, I thought that was an interesting choice for them to, just advertise so much and to seem to be even in the album cover like it was like a 70s font on <laughs> for the album title yeah um, i mean the feel was definitely there you know i didn't it didn't really occur to me until you brought it up but yeah it's it definitely there's an attitude present in it um i i mean i don't know how analog this album is like, yeah i, I listen to it on you know my good speakers here mm-hmm. um I mean, it has a modern sound. It doesn't sound like 
shitty. <laughs> it doesn't ha- it doesn't sound lo fi either. It's it's no. it's very well mixed and yeah. recorded. It seems like they used a good studio at the very least, and uh, oh, they yeah. could have used a a digital audio workstation for all I know. I, I I have no idea. They could have used Pro Tools, or it could have been all. No, I'm I'm sure it was. I mean, see, that's the thing. It's like there aren't very many people that are fully analog anymore. Yeah, you know what I mean, and. By the way, by analog, we just mean... <laughs> yeah, we got to not be so technical. Like, <laughs> okay, I'll just briefly explain. Analog just means in the physical world. So you had people in the 70s and the 60s, you know, recording on tape machines, um, pressing to vinyl, people having, you know, mixing consoles and control boards. Knobs. It's the difference knobs. between using a knob or using a physical... Something you can physically Piece touch. of gear. Yeah. And then you know, digital is in the computer. You know, you're yeah. on your laptop, you're Synthesized. in garage band, um, you know, MIDI keyboards, all this sort of shit. Yeah. We got to be careful not to get too, yeah. I, I just said, duh. Don't want to, yeah. <laughs> no one's going to know what we're <laughs> talking about. You don't want to go down the rabbit hole here. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, um, we'll reel it back. Let's reel it family. back. So, you know, I'll say my review of this album. It's very long, by the way. It's almost an hour long. It's a long album for sure. I think like I listened to like three fourths of it and then finished it um, this morning. Basically. That's literally what I did. I because, woke up early this morning and finished. Cause the I realized like, Oh, it's actually a lot longer than I thought. Um, and the songs average four to five minutes, which is yeah. it's pretty impressive to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I won't say impressive. It's just, that's what it is. It's yeah. crazy. Um, I'll say it's, I think it's a buy it for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll say it's a buy it. I, I would give it a solid try it. And that the only reason is because but there were really good songs on this album. Like Modern Rain, I really like I'm a slut for electric piano. So Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I, I that so I like that so kind of stuff. So 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there there's that's like my dichotomy of me. Like I'll talk shit on like the fact that they seemed like they were trying too hard to be analog yeah. and then and then go off but you and can't say deny I love it. the it's, electric piano. It sounds on. good. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I mean, I, I would say it's like a try it and a half. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> Somewhere in between try it and buy it. Ah. I was really close to yeah. saying try it. Let's say a try it point three. I'm going to downgrade it. Okay. So try it point three. It was a solid album though. I, I, I definitely enjoyed it and it was cool. I just feel like they, they just, they'll hit, they'll hit their stride. If they continue songwriting and kind of, I think they'll definitely, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they put out another album next year. You know, I, I don't know how, how long they've been around. It's like these, these, these albums that I listen to and, and I get recommended to is like, I jump into them knowing fucking nothing yeah. about the artist. How did you even find out about these guys? Uh, so this was just on my Spotify Discover. Like, every week they give oh. you a Discover of... Or, no, sorry, a new releases playlist. Yeah. So I'll go down the playlist. If something's remotely interesting, I'll click it and be like, okay, is this part of an album? Yeah. Great. Okay, it is. Cool. Right. I released this year, yeah. and I'll listen to it. Can I just say really quick, I really appreciate that we do you do albums on this show because mm-hmm. no one listens to albums anymore. Yeah. And I know it for a fact because we can see, um, like we have Spotify for artists, so you can see like obviously how many people are listening to your songs. Yeah. And they'll do it in order. And the except for like the that will release singles, those get the most plays. And then you go down, and then you can put it in order of like what the track numbers are, and then it just gets less and less and less as yeah. it goes on. But I think it's important. Like artists definitely spend a lot of time thinking about what track the track order is going to be, and like they tell a story. So I really like that. Yeah, I like being commanded to like listen to a full project. I have some I have some some thoughts about that. About um, so I think it's it's my personal preference to listen to an album. Yeah in a row and I really make sure there's no shuffling happening, you know, I, cause mm-hmm. I want to listen to the track list the yeah. way it was meant to be. But the whole thing about being an artist, and I know you'll agree with me is we're catering to an audience, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, this, this podcast I think is geared towards musicians kind of inadvertently because I'm a musician. Everyone I have on is involved in music, right? You know, I guess I'm hoping also that people who are like, oh, I like the swells. Oh, Maddie's on. You know, I'll listen to what he has to say. Right. Um, Which is a grave. That's grave a plus. Mistake. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think so. Okay. Well, anyways, don't beat yourself up. Um, but I think uh, our job is to cater to 
an audience. It's like, that's the sad part for me is that in the end, it all comes down to whatever other people think about you. You know, it, it's, it's, I think it's a little self-defeating because we spend so much time looking in ourselves to, to write music and right. to write songs. And then yeah. in the end, it, all it is, is it's on a plate and it's like, do yeah. you like it? You yeah. Know? Yeah. And then people are just going to apply their own meaning to things anyway. So exactly. Yeah. I guess it's just like, I guess the best analogy I could give is like, you go to a five-star restaurant and then the chef cr- cooks up this like beautiful steak that's been marinating for five days. <laughs> I know where this is going. And then he plates it up and it's beautiful. And then you ask the waiter for ketchup. Yeah. Which, at the end of the day, it's like, if that's what you like, that's what you like. But yeah. then the chef is going to get an all in a hustle and hustle and bustle. And at the end of the day, I think that's probably just my problem. <laughs> well, and it's the same thing with like sushi where it's, you know, you're not supposed to put soy sauce on certain rolls. Yeah. Because it's like considered an insult, which I get. But it's like, what can you expect? Yeah. Because we're at the end of the day. Why do, why do we keep saying at the end of the day? It's just so applicable to what we're talking about. Yeah. At the end of the day, um, you know, we're making a product. Yeah. And God, it sounds so stupid, doesn't it? To say. Right? Well, that even goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? We were mm-hmm. talking about, um, for those of you that weren't here because you... Well, I think this we did not hit record. Air. Yeah, it was off Yeah, yeah, air. we were just talking. We were just talking about um, the differences between signing to a major label versus signing to an indie label mm. versus being like Chance the Rapper and, and signing to yourself. And it's it's just like, you know, you, you have certain things that you, you're going to have to placate to your audience sometimes if that's what you choose to do yeah and or you're placating to a major label or you can be an artist like chance the rapper and just say fuck all that i'm gonna do what i like to do and i have these like you were talking about the ten thousand fan rule i have these ten thousand ten thousand designated true fans that are gonna buy everything i put out no matter what they're gonna come to every show no matter what yeah for him obviously that number is far higher yeah of course but yeah, if you have if you have that kind of dedicated fan base, then you don't really have to worry about that. Like you can have that kind of freedom to do whatever you want. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like we have we have a lot of wonderful people who love and support our music and we couldn't be uh more grateful for that cuz it gives us the freedom to express ourselves. Like we do jazz covers during our set and we have people dancing in the crowd and that honestly just does not happen that much anymore. Yeah. We we cover Caravan yeah <laughs> dude that's like a 60 year old 67 year old song yeah so yeah. um i could be I, wrong on that well i'm not gonna fact check you because i have no fucking idea but <laughs> i think that it's about finding your niche right right um if you're lucky enough to do that like you said there will be people there to support you there'll be the true fans there to support you but it's it's really it's hard to do that because i think you a lot of people come at it as you know, what will make people like my music, which is kind of an opposite way of thinking. Um, and I really think it comes down to luck because if you just sit in a room and you're like, okay, I'm going to write music. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just true to me. I'm not going to try and placate at all. I'm not going to try yeah. and warp anything to be more acceptable. Um, and you do that. Uh, and then people like it, then it's a win-win. Right. Because then you're, you know, I'm satisfied and then... Yeah, because you've made something true and people latch on to what's true. Yeah. Um, If you try and subvert yourself uh, and warp your vision and all that kind of shit um, and you still get fans, it's like, okay, that's kind of a half win because you're pretending. Right. (laughs) But you got fans, uh, but they're not really fans of you. They're fans of this... Version of yourself. Version of yourself you've created. Yeah. Dude, it is so difficult to write i i find myself now more than ever we're writing and recording an album right now and we kind of do it as we go but i have to be so careful to not just emulate whatever i'm listening to and it's so difficult Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm checking myself all the time and recording to my phone and listening back and just making sure like oh this doesn't sound like you know, like the instrumental on this, like Kaliushi's the thing that I just, or this Tyler, the creator thing yeah. I just listened to or whatever, whatever you want to call it. But I have to be very careful to not just, uh, 
you know, be a wannabe whoever. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I started from a, a point where I was so extreme in that sort of way of thinking mm-hmm. that I would actually musically isolate myself. And I, I've thought about this before. I thought, okay, if I was going to make an album, what would happen if I isolated myself from listening to any music <laughs> following or preceding the writing of the album? Right. Like, let's say I did it for a full year. Like just not listening to music? Not listening to anything. Fuck. What would happen when I sat down to write the album? Right. You know, I think what would happen is I would just end up emulating the last what, thing you listened to. Yeah, the last time I listened to it. Yeah. So it, it's, I've thought a lot about that. Is there any way to escape your influences? And the answer is no, because right. the first human that ever created music was inspired by something. Right. Whether it was n- fucking something natural, like he heard like Birds. a bird chirping and he was like, yeah. boop, 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 yeah. boop, boop, boop. it's like, that's the first yeah. song, you know? Yeah. So I've now reverted over to something that's a lot more realistic for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, you know what? Be influenced. Right. But diversify <laughs> your influences. 100%. So that's what made me want to do kind of exploring music. Because if you're stuck in the 90s, everything you make is going to sound like it's from the 90s. Yeah, and no one's going to give a shit because yeah. it's like that. We've Well, been there. some people will give a shit, but only other people that are stuck in the 90s right. do. So I think to be uh, a truly original musician, you have to listen to everything mm-hmm. wholeheartedly. Oh, yeah. Um. And you can't discriminate. Like you can't say, uh, and and also don't shoot down your own ideas. If you have an idea that you know is like, oh, is it too much like this? Just do it anyway. Just follow through, and yeah. then you can make a decision at the end. That's something too, especially when you're writing for an album because you're thinking, is this album worthy before it's even finished? And you you, you feel yeah, it's like we'll f- we'll follow it through yeah. first. You got to give your own ideas a shot for sure. So, and I think that's applicable to whatever whatever you're talking about just to make yeah. it a little bit more user friendly for whoever's listening. But yeah, if you're, if you're working on something creative and you start like say a painting or a drawing, for example, yeah. or if you're a chef and you're working on a, you know, there's ways to salvage things musically and otherwise that if you are not salvage, but just enrich, if you want to do that, then I, I think it's important for sure to finish whatever project you're committing yourself to. Well, you could salvage things too, in the sense yeah. that oh, I've spent three hours on this song and I just realized it's shit. <laughs> you can say like, well, you know, I did learn some things from this process. Yeah. I learned that the drums sound cool when I do this. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, this section I could probably use somewhere else right. in a different song. Um, why don't you talk about your recording process right now? You, you, you guys released an album not too long ago, right? A year ago, actually. Oh, uh, Was it uh, a full year ago? Yeah, last June. Well, w- wow. Yeah, and we did an EP in between that, and now we're recording Fuck. another album. Oh, you did. So when was your EP? Because maybe that's what I was thinking. Was that about. March? Yeah, I think it was March. We had a release show. I just go by release shows, so yeah. I don't really think. Yeah, it must have been March. I like, remember the release show for sure. Early, um, early March. Yeah, didn't you? You played with Good Boy. I think. I think we did. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Um. So, but you guys are on a new album now. You're yeah, we're doing it. We're just, we just want to work as hard as we can, honestly. And it's a good, it's a good incentive to just get together. Mm-hmm. And, um, cause everyone's busy, right? You guys all have jobs and you're, you're yeah, everyone, functioning members of society. Yeah. I'm in school. Everyone else has jobs, even other musical projects. Jason is, Jason's touring with Michael Sarah and Bane's world right now. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we had to bust a bunch of ass and record like four of his songs before he left. Yeah. So we were in, it's that, and this is, this recording process more than any others is increasingly difficult to explain because we're dealing with like availability issues, which is always availability uh, with what the studio. Uh, well that's, yeah, that's another thing. Um, and you're recording with the whole dog, the cat thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Edwin Gonzalez is our, uh, producer and an engineer Mm. for this album. And, uh, He's been, he's been fantastic. He's given us access during his own downtime because he works at two, uh, two recording studios. Yeah, uh, that are just insane. Like the nicest studios I've ever been in. And yeah, he's been he's been kind enough to work with us. Yeah, through like we've had crazy crazy nights because the the studio is not available until like it's booked up until like ten thirty. Then they yeah. have to load out. We're getting in at like eleven. And then working until like five thirty in the morning. That's what it's about. Yeah, 
So that's that's one thing that kind of makes it crazy. And then a lot of it is some we'll have like ideas for songs and mm-hmm. then we'll get like roadmaps, which is like the structure of the song. And then we'll go in and then it's just kind of like seasoning, seasoning the whole song as, as we go. And, and are you guys writing as you record? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like it's hard to say. I would say that in general, my process for songwriting is that I'll get chords together. Like that's mm-hmm. the first thing. Um, it could vary, obviously. It varies all the time. Like this is just like maybe I've done this three times, so we'll say that there's a pattern there. But I'll get like the chords done. Yeah. And then I'll do like a bass line or Wyatt will write a bass line. Um, and then I'll get like some lyrics together. I'll see what works like syllable wise within the rhythm of mm-hmm. the song. And then after that, I'll like solidify uh, a melody. Yeah. Sometimes it's a riff though. Like I have songs on this album that's that's going to come. Oh, we're probably going to put it out maybe fall. Uh, yeah, it's, I'll just start with like a guitar riff or like a piano riff and we'll, we'll just go from there and yeah. see what works out. And that's fun too because I don't know what's going to go on quarterly with the song at all. Or I'll just bring it to the guys and I'll I'll have like, oh, this is going to be like this chord to this chord. But then why it's playing like completely different chords from what I was thinking. But it works. It works. Yeah. Yeah. And so are you the one that's typically bringing in the start of the ideas or other other uh, members are? It used to be doing other things on what are you going to do? Those were uh, uh, the lion's share of the writing was done by me simply because I had been the longest standing member in the band at that point and yeah. i just had you know the most number of songs yeah for for the whatever genre you want to call it for whatever we're doing and then uh as we as we progressed in the ep like i only wrote one song on the ep that we put out this last time and then this i would say that this album is pretty fairly equal jason started writing a lot um because he just got a midi within like the last like two years year and a half and he's and, just been and going you enjoy crazy. that right oh i love it i love collaborating with everybody and not being the only you know not being the only songwriter and mm-hmm. having like being able to collaborate is fantastic it's a hard thing to open yourself up to that sometimes yeah did you, did you ever struggle with you felt like you were the sole provider at first and you had to you know allow others or it was always easy for you uh no it's it's it was pretty easy for me I would say like there was never really any like no I don't want like this is me no like, contention yeah no I, I was I'm always stoked to like just run ideas by the guys I'll tech I'll like have an idea for a song and then like immediately send it to the group chat we have like a, a band yeah like, little i chat or whatever and I'll just send them like my voice memo of like this horrible quality <laughs> like acoustic electric bass yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, it usually just starts like that. We'll just get like, obviously with Wyatt, you've spoken to him, but he, when he gets like a song idea, it's basically just a scratch track because he has pro tools and all that. So he'll basically just send us stuff yeah. that he's like recorded DI yeah. direct input for those that don't know, meaning he's plugging his gu- guitar bass directly into the computer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, uh, a really great aspect of, of digital recording too is also, like he's doing you said a scratch track yeah. which is basically you know a, it's pre-production yeah you have a song idea yeah and you're kind of figuring it out so you have all these parts that you kind of you don't half-ass but you you play them mm-hmm. not professionally yeah. you know as they would be when it releases but more of like okay i like this part and then after that in the digital world you can cut things up you can move them move them around mm-hmm. you can duplicate okay i want you know, an additional eight bars here. Yeah. This section needs to be shorter or longer. Exactly. So you have that flexibility. Yeah. Are you guys doing any of that in the studio or are you, you're really fully writing songs as a band coming in there and recording your parts? It's a mixed bag. I, I would say that, yeah, up to this point, we've gotten a couple, we've gotten a couple songs that we had like a really solid idea of that, but those are like spacey songs, right? Like they're mm. not super like, like jammy, like, What do you mean by spacey? Like meaning like we'll just pad on like a single chord and it's like more melody driven without chord changes underneath. And so there's like a lot more room for just adding other parts in that work with whatever the chord structure is, which is very like pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, But then we'll have things like some songs that I've written already and that we're going to track, I think like even tomorrow night that like I think we're going to have to change the way that um 
the, the scratches versus what what we're actually going to put on the record. Yeah. Because if, like, say I have, like, a we have, like, a dancey, more, like, kind of poppier song that has, like, a breakdown part, I'm not going to put that breakdown part after the first verse and chorus. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put that towards the end of the song. Yeah. But, like, for the scratch track, just so I know that I want to put that part in somewhere, I'll just record that to my phone, you know? Like, yeah, just so that I don't exactly. forget about it, you know? It's like my electronic notebook. At least it's there. Yeah. Yeah, I have the same thing where it's like uh, you're stricken with inspirations very suddenly. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, I don't know if what this is going to be, but it's I need to remember it. Right. So I'm just going to play it, and then it's there. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, and then there's that cool thing that happens in the studio too, which is like, all right, this is like one of the few times this week that we're going to be able to get together. We're going to the studio today. Get it, get your shit together and like get a song together. Yeah. And then everything you, has to be running yeah. efficiently. Everyone has to be productive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I love it. I love having the whole band in the studio and it's like, you do your take and it's like, great, get in there and like do your take for this song rather than I would like on the first album, a lot of it was, we were having issues um, like I was going to SMC, mm-hmm. for instance, and we were recording in Chatsworth. So I'd wake up super early and go to school for like eight hours and then drive in rush hour from Santa Monica to Chatsworth <laughs> and then be recording with Wyatt until like, you know, 10, 30, 11 at night. Yeah. So we'd be working for like five hours and then I'd have to like drive home. So it's like the difference in between like recording, let me do my guitar part for Dream Girl and then I'll do my guitar part for Zombie Girlfriend. Like those are two very different songs. So it's like you have to get your setup right and the tone on your guitar. Maybe I'm switching my guitar. So that's a lot slower. Whereas if we're working on one song and it's like, all right, cool, Maddie, get in there, go do your guitar part. Jason, go do the, you know, do the horn section. Yeah. Neil, get in there, play organ. It's just like boom, 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 boom. We're yeah. good. And then the added, the stress I actually really enjoy <laughs> uh, of being in the studio and only having a, a short amount of time is like that's that's pressure on everyone to really do a good job and to have something worth recording by the time you get in there. Yeah. Because it's kind of like a sacred space, right? Like it's this is like a real space that a lot of money has been poured into and we've been lucky enough to – you know, gain access and, and someone that helps is like willing to help us and record an engineer. It's exciting, right? Yeah. It's exciting. And it's, but it's like serious, you know, cause we, because we have those true fans, we don't want to disappoint anyone. We don't want to disappoint ourselves. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we want to put out something that adequately represents the entirety of our collective efforts. Yeah. So yeah, I can I love, I love the energy and like the, like, there's camaraderie and like, like stress and it's just really fun. But it's all centered around what everyone loves. And I think that that's the common ground is everyone loves to make music. Yeah. You know, whether it's you being an engineer behind the board or producing or playing instruments or writing songs, it's like everyone's connected by that. And I think that's what you said about camaraderie. It's like, yeah, it's intense. You have a deadline, you Mm -hmm. have not a lot of time or whatever, but it's like, Let's get this done as a team. Right. Let's work together. Yeah. Um, that's the big benefit of collaboration. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I get stuck in this room, you know, for seven or eight hours, like doing something on my own. Right. With no perspective, you know? Yeah. And that can have its own advantages. Mm-hmm. But it's like as soon as you bring another set of ears in here, everything can either be shattered or, or bolstered. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like... I now I've gotten into this groove now where if I bring a a song into the the guys like I and I'll tell them before and I'm, I'll just say like hey you know if this is bullshit like I like I don't want you to tell me otherwise yeah don't sugarcoat it I don't yeah <laughs> funny <laughs> uh I yeah I just say you know like I just need your honest opinion on this if if I need to be putting my efforts somewhere into like a new thing or something yeah. like that then let me know because I don't want to waste well my you time. know what a lot of the times like a lot of great music can be made really on your own yeah. in it in because that's when you're the most genuine right oh for sure there's no facade you're really yourself and you're making something that's true and i think people like i said before people latch on to that it's just that's human nature um but that said you i've had ideas that get shot down so fast and it's it's crushing but it's not it doesn't mean you give up mm-hmm. right it means you just make another song and you do it all over again 
because yeah. we love to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, if I, dude, if I did not completely love the whole process, then I would have quit this shit a long time ago. But yeah, there's just something about being in the studio and like going in and it's dark and then you come out and then it's just completely light outside <laughs> or the sun is coming up and it's 630 and you have to like go home and take the dog out. Like well, You know, you've worked hard. Yeah, you know? you've worked like I just feel good about myself and like the effort that everyone's put in. I'm really excited. And um, yeah, we're, we're going to we're going to be back in the studio this week. Um, but it's going to be like even then it's going to be like a little bittersweet because we don't have like the full like the full team 100 percent. Like everyone's going to be there, but except for Jason. Yeah. And it's like when you don't have because we, we obviously have great relationships with each other and we really value each other's opinions and uh, like songwriting capability. So if it's going to feel like it's going to feel weird to like even for just a couple of nights to not have that full force of like. Like the high council of swells. I just did air quotes because <laughs> this is the high council. Yeah. You know, everyone gets to put in their input and it's like, we'll still get that. But yeah, there's just something very special about being able to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I open that with welcome with, I'm open to that with welcome arms because I'm, yeah, I would not be, I wouldn't be nothing without those guys. And, and secondhand for me is it's like, I'm so excited. That's, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know, um, like, I don't know you 100% well, like a best friend would know another best friend. You know what I mean? Right. But I, it doesn't even matter because there's this gap that's bridged. It's like, oh, you're a fellow musician. Yeah. I've seen you play live. It's like, all I need to do is talk to you for five minutes to know there's a, there's a kinship. Right. And that's the same with all the other people that, I, that are involved in this scene that I had the pleasure to know. Mm-hmm. And that transfers through as excitement because it's like, you guys are recording something that's so fucking exciting for yeah. you and yeah. it's also exciting for me yeah just because i get to watch that happen and mm-hmm. the fact that you can describe to me how that makes you feel it's like that also makes me excited and it gives me um a lot of the times i find i, I get driven by the people around me yeah like i know you've probably seen a kick-ass live performance before and you're just like all i want to do right now is go home and try to make music yeah right yes that's my favorite. I Isn't that the best? That. I love getting scared by my <laughs> friends' bands. That's the best. Don't you love that? Yeah. Like, uh, I like. I'll even say when Siddhartha came out. Yeah. Uh, I think it's funny. I hope George listens to this because we were having like we were having like a little fight about something that I'm not gonna get into because it's really not that big of a deal. But then Siddhartha came out at the same time, and I was like fuck, this album's really good and I, I like, want to do better. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm a bad person in some uh, respects because I get jealous and I get, rese- oh, and, yes. I, and I get resentful. You know, I'm yeah. not going to pretend like it's, uh, it's all uh, kumbaya because yeah. like we love these people that are also musicians, but we right. also fucking hate them sometimes yeah. because they make better music than us. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, I think musicians are inherently competitive, competitive people. Yeah. Um, all humans are competitive. And, right. Like we're not exempt from that. Yeah, but musicians are special, I think. Well, yeah, I think we're spe- I think we're more, you know, in touch with each other's sort of emotions because mm-hmm. we put it out there yeah. more than most people would. Yeah. Um that comes with the territory, <laughs> but it's like also I I I get jealous so easy, you oh, know. Yeah. And someone, it makes me feel so ugly. Someone makes something and I first instinct is like if it's really good i'm jealous yeah <laughs> then i check myself and i'm like okay well you know just Jackson, enjoy it. chill out <laughs> chill enjoy out. it and then my second thing is like well i'm proud of them right you know and then the third <laughs> is like but still fuck them like i need to make something better and then i'll go back and i'll be so driven and i'll try and make something <laughs> but to that's one the up. thing if we didn't if we didn't have that then no one would be making better and better music yeah we push each other yeah right because the like I'm so grateful for those people or even like bigger artists and stuff like that. Like if they put I out, I don't a, feel it as much with bigger Yeah, Cause you don't know them personally or whatever that yeah. like the jealousy doesn't come in as much, but if someone puts out a stupid ass good album, yeah, then I'm like, all I want to do is practice. All I want to do is go home and like, you know, well, I think for me, it's like, uh, if, if someone really big puts out a great album and people are expecting it to be amazing, the, the jealousy isn't there for me. Cause I'm like, well, so I somehow separate them from me. I'm like, yeah. they're 
you know, they're better in some regard, or they've been doing it longer, so of right. course they can do that. Right. But when your peers make something immaculate, yeah, and it pisses me off because I'm like, well, if they can do it, why can't I? Yeah. There's like a direct comparison. Right. You know? Because that's what your brain wants to do. And I don't know if you've done this too. This is a really ugly side of it. This is an insider scoop. <laughs> but the the Instagram follower checking, you ever done that? What's Where you, that? You look at your... Your Instagram followers. Oh, of course. And then you just go check, like, oh, South Park's catching mm, up. Like, well, it's not like... Interesting. Mm, yeah. How did they... Are they fake followers? What's like, happening here? Yeah. <laughs> Graham, what's something, happening? Something's like, <laughs> fishy. <laughs> no, Gra- yeah. Graham, and, Graham Steele of Sad Park and I, we were hanging out the other night, and he was just talking. He was like, I noticed we're catching up to you guys on Instagram. And I looked at him, and I was like, you do that too? And he was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> No, you're like, you're smelling you're like, oh, that's great. And then you go home and you're like, yeah, f- fucking catching up. No, but I it honestly endeared me to him. Yeah. Well, because it's real. Like, yeah. we all do that. It's like, dude. you know what? I'm, it makes me happy. To we're, hear all, that. we're all people. We all right. get jealous of each other. Yeah. But it, see, the, the, the thing is like, don't let it actually get ugly because people like to start beef. I'm not about beef. Yeah. I don't do beef. Yeah. Everyone is in it to win it. You know, everyone's trying to do the same thing here. Yeah. Trying to make music, you know. Yeah. Some people have more lofty goals than others. Right. Some people just want to make music, whatever. I like to keep it, you know, cool. Um, but yeah, the, that's definitely an element. It's like comparing dick sizes, you know. Yeah, totally. Or like, what's your eight inches? Okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll go home and I'll measure mine and we'll see, you I'm know. Rocking 2.46. <laughs> fully erect um but we're all like in the same boat in terms of popularity like relative to each other i think it's really funny and a little annoying when people say things like oh um you know something to do with like they act like they're a big you know deal you know they're like oh all of our fans and i'm not trying to be a dick i'm not trying to tear someone down Mm -hmm. but i'm i'm just being like well, be realistic here because yeah. we're all nobody. Yeah. <laughs> relative right. to, like, take the biggest person you can, you know, relative to that person, your hero. You're nothing. You're nothing. Okay? Yeah. So let's keep it on an even playing field here and let's, you know, let's all have fun together and grow together. Right. But if you act like you're the shit, then you've got nowhere to go. Yeah. You've People got, can you put your through. ceiling right yeah. where your head is. Right. And you're like, this is as big as I'll ever be. I'm like, okay, well, you have fun then. That's good. If that's, that's good it. for you, then that's good for you because, you know. Because that's, that's where you're going to stay. Yeah, if, that's, if you can't cast your, your sights any higher, then I'm sorry, my friend. But Yeah. yeah. Um, let's, uh, I think we're getting to the end here. Let's talk about your Desert Island band. Your favorite band. Well, actually, it's not even your favorite band. It's like your, if you were on a Desert Island, the one band that you could have. What would it be? Like just to perform for me any at any given time. That's a good past, point. Past uh, I was thinking more of oh, like it, music it could, that I could just listen to. Yeah, it could be any time, past, present, future. The White you, Stripes. If you know what's going for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, The White Stripes. Wow, I That's didn't know. That's just my all time favorite band. And I know people think that like oh, like he's in probably t- into some like really obscure like French jazz. Or something like that. They think that about you? Yeah, people people think that... I, I think you've even said that to me. You what? asked me what my favorite band once. <laughs> I think I said The White Stripes, and you're like, I was expecting something that I've never heard More of. More elitist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. That, I mean, that's just... And all, like, that's just because like I would not be a musician if it weren't for that band. Like mm. The r- only reason I ever picked up a guitar ever was be, they had the, did you ever watch that movie 2008 it was called it might get loud with jimmy page the edge and no, jack white i didn't watch that great great documentary about the electric guitar and those three bands and those three musicians wow really great and uh yeah i just was like so turned on after i saw that movie like i went home and like i had like this acoustic guitar laying around and it, yeah i think it was 2008 i was like 12 and uh, yeah, I just started playing guitar, and then like a couple of years went by, I was not really messing with it that much, and then I did jazz band in my junior year of high school. Mm. So that's when I really started seriously playing guitar. So you owe it to the White Stripes, basically. Oh yeah, yeah, easily, easily. So that that's I just gotta give it to them as like my desert island. That's band. a refreshing answer. I mean, uh, I was kind of afraid that people would just fall back on like really old bands like the Beatles. 
you know? What a bullshit answer would that be? Well, George said the Beatles. I mean, it's a great answer. <laughs> I'm sorry, George. No, wait, he no, said... No, I mean, the Beatles are... That's my... I'm also just kind of an asshole. Like, that's... They're obviously a fantastic band. Obviously. But I think uh, musicians were just kind of like, yeah, Beatles, we get it. You know, they're great. Yeah, I just can't, like... It's like not... You can't even contest that. Yeah, and they're, they, they were so different throughout their career. Like, if you look at their stuff in the beginning versus like the end like abbey road stuff versus yeah. like meet the beatles <laughs> you know whatever i'm jealous of the beatles yeah who isn't they were insane a little overrated i mean no no they're not i've said that too but the th- like that's the thing is like kind of just thought about the statement i just said are they i don't yeah, really are know. they over- i mean I no don't i don't think so they they deserve it yeah yeah I wonder if if John Lennon didn't die, would they be less famous? I think if John Lennon didn't die, then more people would know that he was like an anti-Semite. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I mean. Would they be like, they would be maybe a little more infamous. Or at least he would. Yeah, but they, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I just can't, I couldn't say. I, I very rarely put on the Beatles. Me too. They usually just come on and I'm sometime. like, oh, yeah, this is a great song. Like, this is a really. Yeah, great no, it's song. great. And like, I'll, I'll just be in the car and someone will play it, you know, and they'll play like, hey, Jude. I'm like, I yeah. love this song. Yeah, but, jo- but like, put it if on. you compare like George to me, like I'm an asshole and he's like just a sweetheart. So yeah. it, I guess it makes sense. Like, of course, I you would were want- in an arena together. You'd rip out his heart. No, no, no. He'd hug me to death. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so last question then, would you like to embark upon the gauntlet challenge? Oh, I'm definitely doing the gauntlet. Yeah. yeah I already knew you sure. were cause you brought your instruments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First person to bring his own instruments. Oh, for, for real? Yeah. Well, I think cause it's kind of an established thing at this point, but the first couple episodes I was still figuring out how to do it. Right. So I wasn't sure. I was like, we may or may not do this thing. And they're like, okay, I don't even know what you're talking about. The gauntlet. Yeah, dude, I'm down for the gauntlet. So the gauntlet, for those who don't know, is um, basically just a fun challenge that I challenge my guests to. So you have 45 minutes to write and record an original song using, um, you can use any instrument in this room if you'd like, but you've brought your own bass. I mean, we'll see what's going on. And guitar. Yeah, whatever. I've got synthesizers. I've got bass, guitar. Um, I have real drums that we can record. I have vocals. Sounds good. Um, Cool. So that's going to be the gauntlet. Uh, today is the ninth, so this episode will go up, um, and it's also Saturday, so this will go up on Tuesday. Uh, Today's along- Sunday, I think, right? Sunday. Sorry, it's Sunday the ninth. Yeah. This episode will go up Thursday. on Tuesday, and the gauntlet will go up either Tuesday or you know maybe Wednesday. Yeah, you gotta mix it. I gotta mix it. Gotta mix and mask. I, I half ax. I half ass mix it. I, I don't. Can't know. you just mix it louder? Why do you need to? Mix it? <laughs> Well, you know, that's a, that's a, oh my God, don't do this. <laughs> okay. That was episode nine. Um, this was Manny Greg. That's your last name, right? Greg? Yeah. Greg. Yeah. Full okay. name, Matthew, John, Patrick, Dominic, Greg. Wow. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Don't call me Matthew or Matt. Cause I'll uh, rip Punch your spine you. out. I'll rip your spine out. There you go. Fatality style. Fatality. Brutal. So <laughs> you play guitar and sing in the swells. You're recording an album right now with that's Dog true. and the Cat Records. What's the studio called? The studios are Fever Recording Studios yeah. and Clear Lake. Funny story, real quick. Yeah. Uh, no doubt recorded at Clear Lake. Oh, studios. look yeah. at that! I can't remember which album, but like I saw of- Gwen Stefani at uh, in Lake Arrowhead one time. Yeah, I didn't approach her. I was too scared. Yeah, I bet she was on vacation. So yeah, she was. I did probably her. nice. Yeah, I yeah. usually try to let people do their thing. Anyways, thank you guys for listening. Um, I'll be back next week for another episode. See ya.